What's up Wizards, TypeScript 5.5 is out. This is not a drill. This is one of TypeScript's most anticipated releases in a long time. And there's one feature in particular that I am really excited to tell you about. So let's dive in. Let's start with something that I just did not expect at all. TypeScript can now check your regular expression syntax. So let's say you've got this complicated regex down here, please immediately here, and you've got this stray kind of like, um, parentheses here, it says, did you mean to escape it with backslash? So it's actually checking your syntax for you. It can even do really advanced stuff like checking whether back references exist. I don't even know what back references are in regex, actually, that's pretty crazy. So this one looks like there's two capture groups here. I think that's via the plus and it's referencing a capture group that doesn't exist. Same thing with named capture groups as well. I mean, that's just nuts. This feels kind of unexpected for me. It's unexpected that TypeScript would move into this space, this kind of regex checking space. But I guess why not, right? Like it's got the ability to actually just inspect your code. Why not check that your regexes are okay along with the rest of your logic? So yeah, massive thumbs up from me just increases the safety of your code, make sure that you're doing all the right stuff. Brilliant. This next one is really, really great for monorepos. Let's say that you have like a tsconfig base.json here that has an out directory. This would basically sit at the root of your monorepo and then other tsconfigs would extend from it. You might think that if you have this out directory in the root here, then this out directory would actually reference the config directory where you're in. So imagine you've got package A down the bottom that basically says, okay, put them in dist here it actually doesn't work like that. If you're inheriting this out dir of dist from the base, then it's actually not gonna put it inside the package. It's actually gonna put it in the base which is really, really annoying. So to solve this, TypeScript 5.5 has a new template variable configdir. This means that in tsconfig.base, you can basically say configdir slash dist. And this means that the files will get spit out inside the correct directory, inside package instead of at the base. This is really useful because previously inside a monorepo, inside the monorepo I have at work, you basically had to specify root dir and out dir in order to get these things working inside a monorepo. Otherwise you just end up with just tons of stuff in dist. So again, a massively welcome change. And I don't really know why it didn't always work like this. But I guess, you know, the best changes are obvious in hindsight. Let's talk now about isolated declarations. This was authored by a bunch of folks at Bloomberg and Google, and basically aims to solve issues with TypeScript in massive, massive monorepos. If you think about TypeScript turning TypeScript files into JavaScript files, it's kind of doing two things at once. It's turning TypeScript files into JavaScript, and it's also turning TypeScript files into declaration files that describe that JavaScript. The bit where it's turning things into to JavaScript, that can actually be automated away or rather given to a tool that can do it much faster like ESBuild or SWC. The reason for that is it's just stripping out the types and so it doesn't need to know what the types are in order to strip them out. But for creating declaration files, it does actually need to know what the types are, which means that ESBuild and SWC, tools like that, Rollup, etc., they can't create declaration files, only TSC can do that. But actually they're pretty close to being able to do that if only TypeScript could be a little bit stricter if it didn't let you do quite so much inference if it had more rules for what you're allowed to do then tools like ESBuild and SWC could actually generate them this would be a massive massive increase in terms of speed because these tools are so much faster than TSC and it means that in a monorepo massive massive monorepo thousands of packages you could generate d.ts files and js files everything you need very 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 fast hundreds of times faster so isolated declarations what it does is it basically says to TypeScript, okay, you're only allowed to do these certain things. Don't rely too much on inference. So tools like Zod, Xstate, uh, uh, TRPC, things like that, that really rely on inference, they're not gonna benefit much from isolated declarations. It's gonna mostly be used, I think, in kind of packages in large monorepos where and you might have thousands as well of these, where you basically just need to generate them as quickly as possible. They're not relying on inference. There's not a lot of complex TypeScript going on there. And what this means is you're gonna see enormous speed ups in monorepos. And Rob Palmer, the guy that's behind this at Bloomberg, basically says it's too early days to be reaping the rewards from isolated declarations. The ecosystem needs to catch up. Tools like SWC, they need to integrate with it and check that it works, all that stuff. So while it's early days, I think it's something you should be keeping your eye on if you're interested in those sorts of problem spaces. Now, before we get to the final thing, the thing I think you're gonna be most excited about, my book is very nearly ready. And there's something very exciting to announce, which is I'm gonna
going to be releasing it free online. Here it is. This is Total TypeScript Essentials. Ignore the fact there's no description found. Look at the beautiful artwork. Look how many chapters there are. There are 16 chapters. I've been working on this since August last year. Let's dive into just one of them. Let's dive into like objects, let's say. And I mean, there's just so much content here. There are exercises you can do here, like that actually link to a VS Code instance too. There is like two slash annotations. There is just so much going on here. It starts all the way at like setting up your IDE, basically the basics, all the way up to, I would say, the bottom of like wizard level here. So there's generic types, generics, configuring TypeScript, and it's gonna be free online to use as a reference along with the courses or to do whatever you want with. And if you want to learn more about it, then check out the link below to sign up to my newsletter and I'll be keeping you informed there. All right, let's talk about what you've all been waiting for, automatic type predicate inference. I've got a blog about this on Total TypeScript. The TS 5.5 feature no one expected. And genuinely, I didn't think they were going to ship this. I never thought they would ship this. It's amazing that it's here. Let's imagine that you have this value, which is either string or number, and you want to narrow it down to just a string. This could be inside a function, could be inside of all sorts of places. You basically say, if type of value is a string, console log value, then it's a string inside that little bracket just there. But what if you wanted to take that and put it inside a function here, is string. You then replace the if statement with that, but there's a problem, which is value is actually string or number still. To add this, you'd need to add a return type annotation to is string, which is basically a type predicate, that bit there, a type predicate. And this means that whenever this function returns true, then it's going to be a string. But this is pretty frustrating. In, these can actually be incorrect as well. We have an is string function here, which has exactly the same logic, but we're saying that value is a number. And so we can say is string value and it gets narrowed down to be a number. So the annotation is super verbose and really brittle. The obvious answer here seems to be could you just basically infer the type predicate from the behavior of the function? And yes, yes, you can. In TypeScript 5.5, this will just automatically work. You can write an isString function like this and then just call it and it will work. Not only that, but it will even work with just inline functions. So imagine we have this filter here where we're basically trying to filter out something from this array which contains some numbers and a null. Currently, the type that we're getting back is exactly the same of type that we're passing in because our filter basically isn't returning anything. But inside here, if we say if type of member equals number, now the example would just be an array of numbers. We can even just just check that it's not null like that as well. And bam, this works too. This is so cool and it makes so many patterns just work out of the box. But it does have some limitations. If we check for truthiness here, for instance, then actually it will still retain number or null. For some reason, this truthiness check doesn't really qualify it to be an automatically inferred type predicate. I don't quite know why, but that is a decision they made. And another thing that doesn't work is Boolean just doesn't work either. So it seems to me that filtering via truthiness or false falsiness kind of doesn't work for triggering type predicates. You need to be doing something like not equal to this or type of checks, instance of checks. Anything that you're used to in TypeScript narrowing will work here. But oh my God, it's still a massive, massive improvement. This is the kind of thing that is a good enough solution that will work in most cases and people will go crazy for this. I'm so, so, so excited that they shipped it and I can't wait to see what more of these kind of brave improvements they're gonna put out there in the future. So there we go, friends. That is TypeScript 5.5 in the bag. I'm pretty excited about it, I have to say. Lots and lots of cool things here. I can't wait for the future of TypeScript. And I'm very excited for you to check out my book as well when it comes out. I'm also going to be shipping a course along with it, which is going to be priced a little bit at a lower level than some of my other courses that you've seen. And it's going to be more focused on the stuff that the course is about, or the, the book is about, which is getting you up from beginner level through to intermediate, all the way up to the, sort of the bottom of wizard level. And I'm hoping it's going to be a kind of no-brainer course for people who just want to train themselves up on TypeScript, who've never heard of it before, aren't looking for that kind of crazy advanced level stuff. They just want the good stuff that's going to get them working with TypeScript shipping applications. So thank you so much for joining along. It has been great to see you. I don't do as many of these YouTube videos as much anymore since, you know, I had a baby and I've got other commitments now, but it's really, really fun when I do. So thank you so much and I'll see you very soon.